Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will do an early review of the WeDo ME40 High Temperature 3D Printer. WeDo will launch their Kickstarter campaign in the coming weeks, so let's take a look at the features of this printer. 1. The print volume of this printer is 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters, which is a pretty standard CR10 size. 2. A high temperature hot end that can reach up to 300 degrees Celsius and can print with nylon and polycarbonate filament. 3. An inductive sensor for auto bed leveling. 4. A 4.3 inch touchscreen. 5. A belt tensioner on the X axis. 6. A 32 bit board and TMC2208 silent stepper drivers on the X and Y axis. 7. A filament runout sensor. 8. It uses one ribbon cable from the motherboard for cleaner cable management. 9. A spring steel sheet print surface. I would like to thank WeDo for sending me this printer for an early review, and with that, let's get started. The assembly of this printer is really simple. You just need to connect the gantry to the base, install the filament holder, and connect some cables. Let's put the gantry on top of the base and insert two screws on each side. The good thing is you don't have to lift up the printer to do this like many other printers. Then, I will move it to the side of the table and tighten the screws from underneath. Rotate the printer and tighten the other side. It also came with two sets of brackets to reinforce the gantry. Just use bolts and T-nuts to secure it, and I will make sure it's a perfect 90 degree angle before I tighten it all the way. Do the same to the other side. For the filament holder, just secure it with bolts and T-nuts at the top and screw in the roller. We will connect some cables, starting with the Z-stepper motor, the Z-limit switch, and the ribbon cable for the hot end, which includes all the fan, heat cartridge, and thermistor cables. These are followed by the X-stepper motor, the X-limit switch, the filament sensor, and finally the Y-stepper motor. The Y-limit switch is already connected in the factory. We can now check the belt tension and make sure the print head and the bed are all moving smoothly and securely. I will do a final check on the power voltage to make sure it is flipped to 115 as I am in the US. Ok, we can connect the power cord and turn it on. Go to Maintenance, Next, Jog Mode, and select Return Home. As the Z-limit switch is on top, the gantry is going to move to the top, similar to the Z-calibration of the Prusa. It's going to synchronize the height of both sides of the gantry. Ok, we can now select Level Bed. The print head is going to move to the front left corner. Use the paper test to adjust the height of the print head and let the nozzle slightly scratch the paper. Do the same to all corners, and it's better to do a few rounds to make sure the distance of a corner hasn't changed when you adjust the other corners. Then select Z Offset. It's going up again to home the printer, followed by a 9 point bed leveling. The print head is now at the center of the bed. Use the same paper test and adjust the distance between the nozzle and the bed with the up and down arrows on the screen. Save the value, and we can now preheat the nozzle and feed in some filament. Let the filament run through the filament sensor, hold the lever to release the tension of the extruder, and push it through the Bowden tube until you see filament coming out from the nozzle. Ok, we are ready to print. I want to start with something simple, so let's print this 20mm box G-code file. This simple print is just to make sure everything is working and the layers in the Z offset all look good. The only thing that doesn't look good is the paint on the print surface left a mark at the bottom of the model. Next, I will go to my computer and set up this printer in Cura to slice some models. Select Add Printer, Non-Network Printer, and scroll to the bottom.
There is only one other Weedy printer, which is the X40, and it is the same as this ME40, except it has two extruders. We can just use the profile and make one change. As you can see, the printer looks the same. All we need to do is disable the second extruder. Go to Manage Printers, Machine Settings, change the number of extruders from 2 to 1, and that's all we need to change. Let's start with the calibration cube. Just slice it using the default profile, and it's going to print with a brim. I will just change it to a skirt with three lines. It looks good to me, so let's print it. The layers look fine, there's no ringing on the surface, and the dimension is also accurate. Then, let's print a 3D Benchy with the same default profile. The surface looks nice, but there is some problems with the cooling. It seems the cooling fan may not be powerful enough for overhanging parts like this. Afterwards, I will print this Batman model with some bronze PLA. This model should be printed with support, but I tried to print it without using support, as the rest of the model should be fine except for the nose. As you can see, it's going to print in the air, but I still really hate removing support, and it's very likely to slightly damage the model, so I will just print without support and see how it looks. As expected, the model looks fine except for the nose. I think this Batman with a runny nose is still pretty good considering it was printed without using any support. Next, I will print the Colosseum. This print is beautiful, the details are very nice, and I can't see any problems. I will then try some PETG with high infill. The brackets look good, except the text on the print surface also left a mark on the print. As this printer can print up to 300 degrees Celsius, I will try printing some nylon. The result seems pretty good. The threads are sharp and the part is completely functional. Finally, I will try some polycarbonate carbon fiber. Personally, I prefer PCCF over PACF as polycarbonate is easier to print and the parts are still very rigid. Okay, after all these prints, let's talk about what I think of this printer, starting with the pros. 1. The assembly is easy and only requires a few minutes. You just need to attach the gantry to the base and mount the filament holder. Two. Despite some cooling issues, overall it prints pretty well out of the box. We will talk more about this later in the cons. 3. It has a power on self-test feature. You can choose to enable it to check all the axes, the extruder, and the heated bed to make sure everything is working. 4. The high temperature hot end can print a broad range of filament. I can print PLA, PETG, ABS, nylon, and polycarbonate carbon fiber with this 300 degrees Celsius nozzle and 120 degrees Celsius heated bed. 5. The inductive sensor works great. It probes the bed fast, and I don't have any first layer issues. 6. The touchscreen and UI are pretty good. Setting the Z offset and most common features are included. The structure of the menu is organized reasonably. 7. 
this printer uses higher quality limit switches, which are better than those used on most budget 3D printers. 8. The spring seal sheet print surface sticks really well on most filament. I didn't have a single failed print during the whole test, but I will also talk more about this in the con section. 9. The Z-axis limit switch is installed at the top. When you home the printer, moving the gantry to the top can synchronize both sides of the gantry. I think this is a pro, but the trade-off is you have to wait for it to go up and then come down. As this printer is still not in large batch production, I would highly suggest that we do address the following cons and make some improvements for their final product. 1. There is a single Z-axis. As a new generation printer in 2022, especially at this print volume, I would like to see a more stable gantry controlled by a dual Z-axis. 2. The Z-axis and the extruder did not come with a silent stepper driver, so it still makes noise when the Z-axis moves or when the extruder is extruding filament. 3. There is no Y-axis belt tensioner. After months of printing, you may still need to adjust the belt tension sooner or later. This applies to both the X and Y axis, so adding a Y axis belt tensioner is necessary. 4. It just came with a very basic single gear plastic extruder. I would prefer a dual gear metal extruder as it grips the filament better and is more durable in the long run. 5. The Bowden tube setup is not always worse than a direct drive. When it comes to high speed printing, the Bowden tube setup's lightweight print head always has its advantages. However, this printer is not designed for high-speed printing, so it would be better to just have a direct drive extruder. 6. The single 40mm 4010 blower fan for part cooling may not be enough. It's the same size as the one on the Ender 3. For now, the fan duct is too far away from the nozzle, so unless the fan duct is redesigned to get the optimal angle and distance like the Ender 3S1, this fan may not be good enough for some overhanging parts. 7. The power supply is 350 watts, which is better than the 270 watt CR10 power supply. However, for a larger print bed, especially when the major selling point of this printer is printing high temperature filament like polycarbonate carbon fiber, which requires a 285 degrees Celsius nozzle and a 120 degrees Celsius heated bed, waiting for the printer to heat up to these temperatures takes more than 15 minutes. This takes a bit too long, and I would prefer at least a 480 watt PSU. 8. The white paint on the print surface comes off and it leaves marks at the bottom of your prints. Some people may not care about the bottom of their prints, but some people do. I suggest that the manufacturer could work on the paint, or simply replace the center large logo with a smaller logo in the corner, or just use a textured PEI spring steel sheet. Okay. That's all the experience I've had so far with this printer. I've also asked the manufacturer for their Kickstarter super early bird price, but I don't have a clear answer yet. In my opinion, considering that the Creality CR10 is $300, if they market this printer as a budget-friendly large-scale printer, it would be a pretty good deal to pay a similar price for a CR10 or Ender 3 Max and get all these extra features, like the high-temperature hot end, a color touch screen, auto bed leveling, a spring steel print surface, a filament sensor, x belt tensioners, silent stepper drivers on the X and Y axis, cleaner cable management, and some cosmetic upgrades. But at the same time, you need to take the risk of Kickstarter, as we have seen some campaigns that failed in the past. You need to wait much longer for delivery than buying existing printers on the market and without the Creality brand. Of course, Creality does not always mean very high quality, but I would at least consider it to have a minimum standard of reasonable quality. So, let's see what their Kickstarter price will be. If you are interested in this printer, I put the link to their site under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe to my channel, and press the bell icon to receive new video updates. I will see you next time. But the trade-off is, you have to wait for it to go up and then come down.